Hey, I'm Mac. Welcome back to my channel. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon for access to new videos till those 25 hours early, as well as some Patreon exclusive content. Okay, so if there's one thing that I love seeing, you know, as someone who has had a uh, issue with alcohol in the past that almost killed me and who has been sober for what? almost six years now. Thank you, gentlemen, stay in your seats. Uh, what I love to see is people using their uh, uh, sobriety as a way to market their MLM because <laughs> we just love to see totally non-predatory practices like that, right? So what we're gonna take a look at is a um, is a is a little presentation. Uh, I believe it's a live stream on Instagram. It might not be a live stream. It might be just like a recorded video, actually, from a presenter for Amare. I guess is the name of it. Not to be confused with Amare, which of course is the future tense of amar or love in Spanish. Although it's like love, like intense love, you know, you know, because like in English. We'll say like, I love my husband with all my heart, but we'll also say like, I love these nachos, you know. She's going to tell us all about how it's totally uh, going to help you uh, stay sober and everything. So a trigger warning uh, for, you know, she's going to talk about substance use a little bit and about like, you know, triggers for using and stuff like that. So, um, you know. Just make sure you're in a good place and uh, let's go. I'm in the car waiting to get my hair done. And I'm actually, um, I'm in this city where it's Kirkland and it's downtown Juanita, which is a part of Kirkland where I lived with John. It's where my first year in recovery. So when I was in rehab, part of I was in rehab for 61 days and part of the treatment plan moving out was to get out of my parents' house um, within three months, right? So John, who is the father of my four kids, my boyfriend, 10-ish years, um, no, nine-ish years, he was flipping a house up north, so he's like, I could use a roommate. And I thought she said tennis years. And I was like, what is a tennis year? I'm so stupid. Someone living in my house while I'm not in it. So that is the little neighborhood I'm in. But. A roommate that you've like had kids with? Okay. It's a little weird. Kirkland is also the place that I grew up. Um. I did a lot of using and drinking down here. Like I'll see the lake and I'm like boat party. I'll see different places and my subconscious will pick up like a feeling of a time I used or drank that I haven't thought about in years. And so coming to this part of town where I grew up always brings up like weird feelings that that are a little uncomfortable in my stomach shows up. Oh, yeah, see, see, I'm autistic. So uh, like, you know, my 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 memories are just, you know, drinking alone <laughs> by myself. <laughs> it's just different, you know, I've been like as gas and um, shows up as <laughs> gas and nervous laughter, etc. And just like this, like feeling in the pit of my stomach. Oh my, I thought she said etc. <laughs> She's saying, et cetera, I got it. Um, I forgot that I usually ground myself with a tree oil when I do this. So anyway, I'm going to get my hair done from, from someone whose girlfriend I went to high school with. And she... Wait, like girlfriend, girlfriend or girlfriend, girlfriend? I'm not as... I don't, don't... I never like used or did anything crazy with her and her husband who I went to high school with and have known since ninth grade. He is a really, really awesome guy. Um, so I'm not nervous about seeing her. It's just weird being in this part of town, but I are you sure that you're not nervous? Anyway, I get questioned a lot. What is this happy juice? What is this stuff? And, um, 
a lot of people want to know because it. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would want, I would be kind of concerned if I heard that you were using happy juice. Comes up as something when I started back in May. Anyone I talked to about happy juice had never heard of happy juice. And this was just, what, six months ago. So that's a testament to how fast this company is growing and how. Okay, how many of you have heard of happy juice? Uh, yeah, me neither. Oh, if you follow the science, it takes off from there. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's the science, obviously. Um, so now it seems really gimmicky or trendy, I think, when you see... Yeah, I wonder why. ...see Happy Juice. Like, oh my gosh, there's another person talking about Happy Juice. Who's jumping on this Happy Juice train? Um, and it looks like just something everyone's doing because it's a trend. So yeah, okay. Um, this is my first time hearing about it. So I wanted to pop on and tell my story because she just wanted to hop on here because I have all these individual conversations about what happy juice is. And I'm like, why not go to the masses and let them know how I started with happy juice? Okay. Settle down. Okay. I, the masses. I don't even call my audience the masses. And what happened was, um, yeah, what had happened was back in May, I, John and I are done having kids. And so I, you sure about that? Wanted to go back on my ADHD medication for my ADHD. I went off. Yeah. Well, good fucking luck with that this year. <laughs> sorry, Adderall users. I'm sorry. I came in like an Adderall. In 2015, when I got pregnant with my first and have never gone back on since and use the tools that I learned in um, addiction studies and mental health therapies through my major, and then also tools that my own therapist had given me. But tools only go so far when you have a hundred tabs open and you can't get the laundry done. You can't turn your mind off from thinking about other things. You, you can't figure out which one is fucking playing that song. <laughs> can't cook dinner because you're doing five other things. Like I literally could not complete a task. So I was like, I remember telling my mom, I need to, cause my mom will watch my kids from time to time. She's watching them now. Um, I remember telling her mom, something's got to give, I'm going to have to go back on my ADHD meds if I cannot get this under control simultaneously within like 24 hours. Cause when you throw shit out to the universe, the universe hears you and throws it back. I, I just, <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of the hardest types of worldviews for me to relate to. Like, <laughs> the universe in my, the only way I can see it is the universe is completely indifferent to you. Completely indifferent. It is unaware of your existence and is potentially unaware of anything, okay? It does not give a shit. It doesn't it doesn't want it doesn't wish you harm, but it also does it's completely just indifferent. Which is the most terrifying way way of all, you know? But uh, you know, just cuz it's terrifying doesn't mean that that's not the way it is. Nicole um, reached out to me and told me about Amari and she was reaching out to me out of like a business potential. But what attracted me to it was gut health. We all have heard and known about gut health and how it can help mental health. But over the last <clears throat> seven years as a mom, I've never wanted to look into it because to me, gut health meant that I needed to eat healthy um, that I had to go through and make sure that all my food was clean cut and that I'd have to meal prep. And that was just like way too overwhelming for me to even think about. So I went to the Amari site. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to go all in. I got one of the starter packs and I was like, okay, I'll see what it'll do for my ADHD. How did we get from gut health to ADHD? 
Anyway, I'm pretty sure. Isn't that when the moon hits like a big pizza? P- no, wait, that's a more. That's a more. I'm sorry. Newsflash: I never had to go back on my ADHD pills. It's been six months. But what's more is. But it's been it's been six months, you guys. Three weeks into using the happy juice, I. You were strung out. <laughs> Well, first off, rewind a bit. I remember about day seven, and don't judge me for this. <clears throat> I'm not making any promises. But brushing teeth at night at 7 p.m. with four kids used to be, is is really, really hard for me when they get into those night sillies. They're not listening. Aren't you in Washington? Doesn't the sun set at like 10 p.m. in Washington sometimes, like in the summertime? Like, I wouldn't want to go to bed when it's still light outside either. I don't know. Etc. And that night, <clears throat> about day three to seven, using happy juice, I didn't yell at my kids. I, um, I laughed with them. I paused before the yell. And that... Uh... Okay, you know, I'm, I don't have kids, so it's totally possible that, like, I don't, that, like, I just don't relate to this or whatever, but really? Like, was it that big of an event that, like, one time you didn't yell at your kids? I mean, I get it. Like, I, I understand that, like, kids can be <laughs> incredibly, like, horrible, like, frustrating at times, you know? But, like, I mean, like, the fact that it happened once was that big of a deal? Like, I mean, I'm sure it happens, like, I'm sure, you know, kids can, kids can be just a whole thing. But, like, really? It's that big of an event when that happens one time? I don't know. Seems like, I mean, I'm, and, like, I'm not saying, like, you know, you're a bad parent or whatever. I'm saying that me, like, I'm surprised that even that even happening once was a big deal and you're the one who's having the behavioral that supposedly is having the intervention the 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 happy juice intervention right so it's not your kid's behavior that changed right it's your behavior that changed you're saying so your kids were acting the same i don't know Seems like maybe some self-reflection needs to be done there. If 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 that's if that's what it took, if it took you changing and not your kids changing. Seems like that's you more than it's your kids. I don't know. That was like pivotal moment for me, but I still wasn't convinced. Three weeks into it, between week three and four. Maybe you were just in a really patient and good mood that day. I don't know. We went to the zoo. We went on a ferry ride. We went to the park for the splash park. Um, and we went bowling. I have been a mom for seven years, you guys. I wouldn't even do this with two kids, let alone four, because my anxiety was like, how am I going to bring one to the bathroom when the other three come in? If I go to the bathroom with one, one's going to be looking the floor. The other one's going to be looking underneath the stalls. How am I going to get everyone on the ferry? But you guys, my anxiety. You got this from a probiotic? What the fuck? It's, it seems like a big leap to me. Anxiety had dissipated. So I had to know why, and that's when I was like, okay, duh, I'm taking Amari. Let's look into this stuff. Yeah, I mean, duh. And within Happy Juice is the Mentabiotics. And Mentabiotics is an up-leveled probiotic, you guys. You can go to the store, and you can look at the probiotic, and it'll give you kind of like a strand. But if you don't know, I'm going to tell you, you can narrow down your pro pre phytobiotics to a specific strand. So let's say it's like two ribo two two point three two. That one can be for depression. The fuck? What was that? Ribo two two point 
three, two, one can be for anxiety. And so. <laughs> what? All right. So, you know, in case that wasn't quite uh, enough information or specificity for you, like it wasn't for me, because uh, I don't know what she was talking about there. Uh, I've printed out their product information. OK, because I print things out like an old man. OK, this is an A4 sheet of paper. Feels exotic here in the US. <laughs> All right. Watch this. Yeah. You fold it in half. It's still the same aspect ratio. Uh-huh. It turns into two sheets of paper that are the same aspect ratio as this. You see? Uh-huh. Yeah. Cause it cause it's a cause it's a one to the square root of two ratio. Yeah, see how stupid our paper is? It's very stupid. You know, what's really dumb is that they made it eight and a half by 11, whereas if they just made it uh, eight and a half by 12, which would be, you know, eight and a half by a foot, uh, it would do the same thing because the square root of two times eight and a half is about 12. <laughs> but whatever, we can keep our stupid paper. What I'm seeing here is what we need to do is we need to go over what a prebiotic, a probiotic, and then I don't know what this phytobiotic is supposed to be. I'm pretty sure that's some bullshit. A probiotic is a supplement of either bacteria or it could also be um, like a fungi, uh, like a yeast or whatever. Um, and it's intended to uh, improve the your gut flora because your your gut is full of all kinds of bacteria and yeasts that are necessary and very helpful to our digestion and just overall health. Like you, you gotta have them, and they also help defend against um, harmful bacteria because you know if a harmful species of bacteria comes along. Well, they're not going to be able to just uh, they're not going to be able to just colonize easily. OK, they're going to have to they're going to face some pretty stiff competition because the bacteria that were already there are going to be like, uh, uh, my human, my human. We were here first, you know, so it's very it's very important to have a good uh, gut flora and probiotics can be very helpful for that, especially if you've just taken a course of antibiotics, you know, or something like that. So, uh, crucially, what's really important about a probiotic is you really are best off going with a very reputable, um, long-standing brand. Um, and in my experience, I would usually recommend either Flora Store or um, Culturel. Those are both pretty good probiotic brands that have been around for a long time. They're well established, and the reason for that is because. These are supposed to be live yeast or live bacteria, right? So they need to still be alive when they get into your gut, right? So they need to be able to stay alive on a shelf and they need to be able to stay alive in a, you know, in a pill and they need to still be alive when they've passed through your stomach and made it to where they're supposed to make their home, you know, in your, in your large intestine. So it's super important to have a reputable brand because the way that those things are stored and prepared and um and and the expiration dates on them and everything all of that is going to have an impact on how many of those organisms are still alive by the time they make it to your gut so yeah that's that's the thing with a probiotic a prebiotic is usually a, a type of, it's usually some kind of specialized uh, sugar or whatever. And the intent of it is to sort of feed, is, is to feed the good bacteria in your gut. 
I don't think there's a lot of evidence for the benefits of prebiotics. For probiotics, there certainly is a lot of great evidence for those. Um, prebiotics, mm, I mean, that stuff's got to make it all the way through your digestive system to feed those good bacteria. And I don't know how you would possibly um, ensure that it is only feeding the good bacteria. And now further here, I'm looking at the MRA uh, information guide. This is sort of like their little handout thing. Mentabiotics is the first product of its kind that combines newly discovered specific strains of probiotics, prebiotics, and phytobiotics in a premium all natural dietary supplement that has been scientifically proven to optimize mental wellness. I mean, your gut can certainly have a, a huge impact on your sort of how you feel and, and, and all of that. But I don't know about, I don't know about, um, I would say it's more of just your gut can be healthy or it can be unhealthy. And obviously one of those is going to be better for your overall well-being than the other. I wouldn't say that there's anything that you can specifically, like specifically target with that though. Like, it, you know, it's, there's stuff that's good for your gut and that's, there's a healthy gut and there's an unhealthy gut, you know, but as far as like targeting specific mental conditions, I don't. I don't think so. Mentabiotics supports the growth and vitality of a range of friendly gut bacteria to increase the production of feel-good neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin. So there's a few problems with this. Um, this is a common misunderstanding about dopamine. Dopamine is not really a a feel good. It is associated with the um the motivation and the desire to do something, but it's not really it doesn't track that just because there's dopamine associated with something that you're going to like it, if that makes sense. It's going to make you do something, but it doesn't mean that you will like it. So, you know, for example, um, I would say, you know, a lot of substance abuse when you're, you know, fully in the throes of addiction, you don't necessarily like using your substance of choice at that point. Dopamine is what's driving you to do it. And it's not making you like it, is it? Not necessarily. There's still the dopamine release, but it's but it doesn't mean that you'll like it. Um, really the, the euphoric feeling that really, that rush of pleasure is, is more, so is more, um, a result of endogenous opioids that, that can be released alongside dopamine, but dopamine itself is more of a goal directed, motivating, um, drive or like desire uh, chemical like it, it it will make you do something or it can drive you to feel like restless dissatisfied like the fact that you need to um you've got to do something like dissatisfaction with your with what you have dopamine is very um involved in sort of that um which is not really a pleasant feeling so dopamine is more of a motivating um, and, and not necessarily motivating in a pleasant or productive way, uh, thing. So it's, I, I feel like it commonly is misunderstood as being a very, a ple like a rush of pleasure and it's not, um, it, it's just what's going to make you do something, uh, and it, but it doesn't mean that you will like it. That's that's modulated by uh, endogenous opioids. Um, and then ser serotonin is a much more complicated one. And uh, it goes on to say, in fact, 90% of our serotonin, the primary neurotransmitter responsible for happiness and mood is actually produced and located in our gut. So 
this is another thing that I always see sort of misconstrued here. Yes, there's that's that's true about serotonin, but serotonin along with dopamine and uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, they're very simplistic chemicals and they're very, very uh, old chemicals. And both serotonin and dopamine have been around for almost a billion years. They've been used by life um, as a signaling molecule for for almost a billion years, possibly over a billion years. It, I believe serotonin is the oldest one, and then uh, dopamine and epinephrine followed after that. Um, and over the course of that billion years, it's it's been used to by different types of organisms to signal all kinds of different things. Um, and so just because serotonin is being used as a signal, even in your own body, um, it doesn't mean that it's always being used to signal the same thing. Like just because I'm sending a text message doesn't mean you always know what the purpose of that text message is. It's just, I'm using this as a way to send a message. Um, <laughs> And so the the signaling that's being done in the gut is different from the signaling that's being done in the brain, even though they happen to be using the same uh, molecule to send a signal. Um, if, for example, does anyone here uh, take Imitrex or uh, or Treximet? So those medications, uh, sumatriptan is the uh, generic name, are serotonin receptor agonists, which means they activate a certain type of serotonin receptor. But like, it doesn't mean that you suddenly feel like a bunch of happiness and maybe you feel happy because your migraine went away, but you don't feel like especially undepressed when you take an Imitrex, right? <laughs> Other than, thank God, that migraine is starting to fade, right? Or um, Zofran, or its, um, or its generic name, which sounds more like an EDM DJ than a medication, on Dancitron. <laughs> Zofran is a serotonin receptor antagonist. Um, and, uh, I mean, has anyone felt especially depressed just because you took a Zofran? I don't think so. I don't I don't think that was it, huh? Right. Because because serotonin can be used to signal a lot of different things. So it it's not a good way to conceptualize it to conflate those different types of signaling pathways. It matters what type of cell is sending out the serotonin and which receptors are intended to receive it and where that's happening in the body what effects that'll have. So, yeah. And before someone says that it's a 5-HT3 receptor antagonist, yeah, that's a serotonin receptor. <laughs> also point out that um, this product's retail price, they, they say, is $100. That's for the mentabiotics alone. She's talking about the happy juice, which I believe includes this and like a powder drink thing I mean, whatever and the the quote unquote wholesale price is 74.95 So within the happy juice, you get the lower depression, the lower anxiety, the lower stress, um, which is what was happening to me. And then in combo, the nootropics and the energy give you this three-tiered energy and help with mood, metabolism, and focus. And the adaptogens within them make it so that your body gets what it needs. It doesn't like give it more than what it needs. And okay, first of all, a nootropic, if something's called a nootropic, I would avoid it. I just would. It's unregulated. There's no evidence for it. 
Second of all, an adaptogen in the European Union, uh, that's a prohibited claim because they have uh, asserted that that is too vague uh, to, to, to claim. Like, it's too vague to possibly be evidence-based because you're saying that, what, like it helps your body adapt? So I would just say that, you know, uh, I would consider that the fact that that is a prohibited claim because of its vagueness and the and the inability to support that with evidence. So, you know, that might count for something. Disperses of the rest. And it has helped my ADHD immensely. Um, and I just, I can look at you and say that I love the mom that I am when I'm on Happy Juice. Okay, I know she's just talking about this probiotic thing, but that specific pattern of that sentence is a troubling thing to hear someone say who has had a history of a substance abuse problem is all I'm going to say. And so that's kind of my story. Um, kind of. That is my story. Um, and how it's just like overall helped me. And then in addition, outside motherhood, it has helped my cravings. And um, I won't say that I don't think about alcohol. I th like I think thinking about alcohol is something that I will always it's just within me. I'm I'm an alcoholic. Like I will see someone at a restaurant sipping a beer slowly and be like, what the fuck? I could never, ever do that. That's interesting. I don't know. I, I, I thought about alcohol a lot, like maybe the first like six months or whatever after I went to inpatient, but I just, I don't really think about it anymore. I just don't. Um, but maybe that's, maybe that's because like, it was never a social thing for me, really. It was just like a super, <laughs> just toxic, horrible thing. Um, like it was never much of a, it was just never a, it was never linked specifically to social things. Like, of, of course I would in social situations too, but like, it was never like, it didn't have to be a social situation. Um, you know, you, you don't need fun to have alcohol, right? Um, but yeah, like, I don't, I don't know. See, and that's my, that's kind of my, why I don't go to, to like, it, 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 and if, if AA is helpful for you, you should keep going. That's great. Awesome. Like, that's really great. Seriously. I'm not being like facetious or whatever. Um, but that's why I, for, it's not for me because like, I don't find it helpful. I feel to, for me, it feels like wallowing and kind of just. I don't know. I would just rather not think about it all the time after a certain point, you know? And, and I just, I just don't, I just, it's, I just don't think about it anymore. You know, it's been six years and I, I just never want to go back to that place. And I think that with this distance, I can see with a lot of clarity, the, just the 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 horridness of it and the in the great place that I'm in now and so it's just interesting to hear a different perspective you know because like everyone's recovery is individualized you know so it's just interesting for me to hear um that like that's not necessarily the case for everybody so thoughts like that don't disappear but like the cravings for alcohol and sugar and the eating, those all disappear when you have the correct bacteria in your gut. And it's super, super cool. Like, like I think this past holiday- Wait, what? Are you saying that you had cravings for eating because of alcohol? Because uh, I did not. I just stopped eating. Season. Um, I know this past holiday season, like I wasn't like- Seriously, like when I showed up at inpatient, like I, I pretty much looked like a corpse. And then after all those meals and inpatient, I was like, <laughs> chowing down on food and I wasn't feeling FOMO over not being able to drink. Um, and then in addition to that, like New Year's Eve, John, who does Happy Juice, he didn't even crack a beer, which is crazy. And actually, I guess I can say that uh, um, it had me thinking about beer and alcohol less because usually I will go to the store and I'll make sure John has a beer because like I overcompensate me not being able to drink by making sure everyone else can um and I didn't do that this year 
So anyway, if you are feeling like you just need up-leveled, if you feel like you have done everything for your depression and anxiety that you could and you just can't kick it, you can't get... Uh, I'm not here to cast like friendly fire or anything, but it seems like you might be in kind of a, 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 a like a dangerous, uh, close to the edge kind of place. I don't know. That's just me. Back to this baseline that that you were before anxiety and depression ever reared its ugly head. Um, happy juice. Wow, what's that like, having a before that? Juice is for you, and you should give it a shot. They have a risk-free guarantee, uh, which allows you to send it back if it doesn't work for you. I'm sure it's really, really easy to get your money back, too. I'm sure it's very simple, and I'm sure it's like no questions asked. When you're a customer, and then as a brand partner, you have this amazing opportunity and perk to like refer to three people and get $135 on top of that. Uh, you have to get three people to sign up and you get $135. That's That sounds easy, it's not easy. It's not easy, that's so much work. It, because most people are gonna say no. So it's not like you have to ask three people, okay? You have to ask a lot more than three people, okay? Think about how many hours that's gonna take. It's gonna take a lot of hours. It's not worth $135. On top of commissions or refer five people and you get 500 plus on top of commission. Listen, there's a reason that they uh, will give these bonuses out and it's not because it's easy to get them, okay? Yeah, you know, the casino doesn't put slot machines out because the public generally wins, okay? They put them out there because the house always wins okay and the reason they're putting this 500 hundred dollar bonus out is because the house always wins it's it's phenomenal um we're about to go global too so phenomenal do, 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 do. this is about to be everywhere and everyone needs well you better stop saying adaptogen before you enter the european union i'm just saying it's mental wellness everyone needs financial wellness to feel complete mental wellness i think um i mean yeah but this is not the way to get that it's just an overall great feeling and place to be so if you want more info now you know my story you know where to find me you know how it's changed my life and helped me become the best in my sobriety, the best in my mental health, and the best as... You know, shame on you for preying on people who are in the same boat as you. That's not cool. That's friendly fire. A mom that I can be. Okay, happy Friday, guys. I'm sure that she believes her own bullshit, so I can't really say that she's, like, a bad person for doing this, but she kind of is. She's... I wouldn't say she's malicious, but she's negligent. She's negligent in her preying on other people in recovery. It's negligent. It, it's, it's being ignorant and being uh, to blame for harm. Um, you know, it, it's ignorance that you can still face guilt for. That, because like you should have known better because people were telling you the information and you should have known better. So I wouldn't say that she's a bad person or that she's malicious but she is being negligent um that's not cool that's not okay and also i don't know it it kind of seems like she's struggling a little bit so i hope that she is continuing in her sobriety and that she is continuing to um do well and to improve so all the best to her but please stop preying on other people who are in recovery for your mlm it, it, that's just bullshit that's not okay stop it thanks I've been Mac. Peace out. Bye. By the way, if you wanna, if you uh, if you wanna uh, uh, watch a live stream of the bird feeder, uh, my hummingbird feeder on my balcony, uh, you can see that at YouTube.com/slash at Matt slash live I don't know. I, I mainly just set it up so that like if something interesting happened, like I could. I, I personally would be able to, to review it or like to see it, watch it, or like see what happened. Um, but I was just like, eh, I don't know, maybe people want to look at it. <laughs> okay.
Come down the stairs.